This is the Miller Philosopher. When it comes to sword fights and fantasy movies, we as the audience often expect something dynamic and almost something akin to lightsaber battles with lots of fancy moves, spinning and twirling, and the hero willing the sword looking mad cool and badass. And I'll be honest, sometimes it actually works. One of my favorite actors slash martial artists, Hiroki Sonata, has been the go-to guy for Hollywood whenever they wanted to do a badass samurai fight that looked halfway legit. However, from the perspective of many Hema martial artists, that is, historical European martial arts, they often are very critical of such fancy moves, usually saying how there are simpler, more direct ways to dispatch opponents, or how fights often go on too long and drawn out to be considered realistic, or that especially no spinning moves because they would just clock the person in the back of the head as soon as he started to do that. One guy even told me that he had a friend who worked on the TV series Vikings as a fight choreographer and when he tried to introduce more historically accurate move sets into the fights instead of the typical Hollywood ones, he was told that the Hollywood style was the way they were going to go and if he didn't like it, he was free to leave. So the reason I bring this up though is that one of the things that I most appreciate about the Lord of the Rings trilogy is its depiction of sword battles. It should be stated though that it is a movie and a fictional story at that. So of course there's going to be choreography involved and at some point, more often than not, the protagonist is going to win in most cases. However, that doesn't mean make it easy for them. And that's exactly what Lord of the Rings does. Oftentimes in sword and sandals genre, as it was called, when they get massive battles, they usually just equate to a bunch of one-on-one -on -one duels happening all at once. And if a legit 1v1 duel does take place, it often has a protagonist and antagonist telegraphing their moves, a larger than normal swing where one wasn't before, an arm held out for just a second longer than normal. You get the idea. You don't get a real sense of any strategy or the chaotic bloody mess that happened that occurs. Or, as Amor frequently puts it, When the fear takes him, and the blood, and the screams, and the horror of battle take hold. The best example I feel is when Aragorn and Gimli save Eowyn from Gothmog in Return of the King, without even noticing that it's her that they're saving. It's just Aragorn bringing on hammer swings and orcs who happen to be in front of him, with Gimli following up behind with his, with his light axes, finishing them off, essentially beat down, back up dude finishes, move on, repeat. Or in Fellowship of the Ring, where Aragorn in a full sprint, parries a Uruk hit, cuts out his legs, and then ruthlessly slits his throat, and then moves on. And yeah, that scene was considered so violent and visceral that it was cut from the theatrical version of the movie, by the way. Also, too, you have the fact that a lot of the heroes get beaten up pretty badly before they actually achieve any victory. I had one friend who thought Aragorn's hair was so messy that she couldn't consider him sexy where just what every other woman did. And we, when me and her boyfriend tried to explain to her that, well, the guy's been running and fighting for a long time, it was an excuse. So yeah, the good guys get fucked up pretty good in these movies. What Lord of the Rings does is that it brings that chaotic bloody mess and strategy back into cinematic battles, if it was even there before. Look at the Fellowship's battles in Moria and Amon Hen, for example. It's not a bunch of enemies coming one on one, or even two on one. It's a rush of enemies coming at them all at once. It leaves no space nor time for doing fancy twirls or epic walkthroughs and it's usually a series of short stabs, parries with swords, axe or knife or shield, violent CQC or, or, or close quarters combat, or throat slicing and so on. For me, this really communicates Tolkien's depiction of the battles that he's trying to indicate as much as he can in his books. In particular, in the Cimmerillion, the Battle of Nerneath or Nordiad where it's trying to describe just how intensely the fog of war had descended upon the whole campaign to such an extent that fate itself was on the verge of changing direction. 
Whenever somewhat fancy moves are used though, it's only done so sparingly. After all, out of the entire trilogy of the Lord of the Rings, we only get two Legolas moments. And they are done so at critical points that still serve the story, while yes, also looking cool as well. This raw approach was done from the outset of filming, as Viggo Mortensen said in a behind the scenes interview, that his first introduction to Lord of the Rings was being handed a sword as soon as he got back from, got there from the airport, and then being suddenly rushed by a bunch of orcs. The difficult part in doing this was trying to bring a cultural uniqueness to each culture's fighting style, while still being raw and somewhat believable. When it came to Gimli, he brought the strength and aggression of Dwarven combat that in all of Tolkien's books the race was famous for. For the hobbits it was group shankings, since strength and speed weren't their forte, or at the least, stealth hits. For the humans, it was a lot of being rushed, parrying, trying to stab, and slashing and back and forth until they managed to get a hit. And the most difficult, I think, would have been the elves, because they're not supposed to be human, even though they look it. This is why any criticism in the fighting in both Lord of the Rings and the Hobbit trilogies, actually, usually falls on them, because it's them that requires the most suspension of disbelief. Yet even they have a visceralness to their fighting, as shown in the opening shot of Fellowship of the Ring during the final battle of the Second Age, where a wave of orcs is introduced to what I've always called the Elven Buzzsaw, because that's exactly what it fucking looked like. Speaking of the Hobbit trilogy, by the way, while I do love those movies overall, one of the few criticisms that I did have was regarding their duels that took place, such as Legolas' battle with Azog's son. The suspension of disbelief was really drawn out, and you can tell that they were really leaning heavily into the alien, elvish agility that they established into the original trilogy. However, their battles were still on point, putting Dwarven prowess for battle established by Gimli in Lord of the Rings now on full display front and center, and showing just why the Dwarves were considered arguably the greatest fighters in Middle-earth ever. And I'm talking to you, Glauron. Even so, this is why I feel the techniques in Lord of the Rings and in The Hobbit, to a degree, are just one of the many elements that set them apart from other franchises and also really set the standard for how sword fights usually go. Essentially, that when it comes to a full-scale battle, it's going to be a bunch of non-stylish, side-to-side -side blows trying to blow past the other person's defense or offense and thrust them or cut off a limb or a head and not look pretty while doing it. Whereas in a duel, well, hopefully you'll get some realism there, at the very least using the environment to their advantage, but for the most part, you can expect some suspension of disbelief, but hopefully it should still look somewhat realistic, or at least graphic, where the hero gets beaten up quite a bit, and I'm not talking about getting the second win part either. But having said all that, what were your thoughts? Let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, this is the Miller Philosopher. You guys have a good day.